let me just say right at the start, this video is much more personal testimony than it is substantive statement. Of all the many voices that there are just now uh, speaking up on racial inequality, Black Lives Matter, what's been happening in America and now the protests around the world and things like that, this voice and this video is really genuinely of zero consequence. Uh, to the point where I didn't think I was going to say anything about this um, but for the last over the last 40 hours or so uh, God's been at work in me to the point where I feel like it's I feel compelled to say to say something but you need to take this for what it is these are the this is the testimony of the wrestlings of a pastor pondering how to comment on this in the most helpful way um, and I'm, I'm sure I've not got that right but it's just my own personal story so take that for what it is it for much more authoritative voices on this issue, I've, I've put a few links in the YouTube description. We'd really commend those to you. Those are almost all videos that other people have sent me, um, but they've been great help to me, and I would commend them to you. One of my favourite verses of any hymn is from Just As I Am, where it says, Just as I am, though tossed about with all my conflicts, all my doubt, fightings and fears within, without, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Those words are so real to me. Conflict, doubt, struggle, fear, that happening within, in my heart, and also without then, without, as I begin to ponder what that means for me as a, as a husband, as a father, as a friend, as a pastor, how to express those struggles and how to help others as well who are struggling with their own fightings and fears. In these recent days, I have really felt that reality of fightings and fears within, without, as it relates to the horrible murder of George Floyd and the resulting protests that have been sparked by that awful event. The conflict and doubt that I'm referring to are not mainly regarding my reaction to those events. My reaction was, I suspect, like yours. I felt shock and horror at seeing what is blatantly an awful act of unnecessary violence from a white police officer resulting in the death of a restrained black man. No handcuffed man lying on his stomach needs a knee pressed on his neck for 8 minutes and 46 seconds with that pressure kept on his neck even after he loses consciousness. And it's a horrific thing that happened, especially as there were people around there highlighting what was happening, and especially as there were officers, other officers there who could and should have uh, intervened in that moment and who, who didn't. The other responses I've had over these days, and again, there's nothing unique in this at all, but there was a sense of grief and horror at this specific act of evil and the reminder of just that sort of violence in the world, all around us really, in the world. There was deep sorrow at the reality that such violence and injustice is very often specifically targeted at black people in particular and other people of colour. My heart was heavy as I listen to the cries, as I have listened to the cries of those who have again needed to remind us that this was not an isolated incident, but one more tragic example of deeply rooted racism. As it's been said by some, it's not that racism has started happening, it's that racism has started being filmed. I grieved as I saw then that some of the violence that has spread in the protests, sometimes riots, and have acknowledged that that has often strategically been provoked and carried out by those seeking to stir up further hatred of black people and other people of colour. And my reaction was, like I say, just like yours, I'm sure, sorrow, anguish, lament, grief, and sadness and prayer. But as I say, I've felt in these days, no one really needs to hear me say that. My, my fightings and fears were not about my reaction. The struggle I felt was regarding the appropriate response to this. So first of all, that was privately 
Like, what do I need to do here? What needs to change in my life in light of what's been going on? But also publicly. What, if anything, do I need to say here? What on earth need is there for my voice in this? And I've also, in the mix of that, been conscious that to not say anything, to not comment on anything, is in, in some senses a response in and of itself. Mainly, I felt like it would be presumptuous, possibly self-righteous, probably unnecessary, inappropriate for me to pitch in thoughts and comments on these issues. I mostly kept my reactions between me and God and me and my family. And as far as I can judge my motives purely, I felt that the appropriate response in these days was to be quiet and to try and listen and learn as best I could. I felt I needed to not speak, but to listen. As I've reflected on that, I've realized I have not done that enough in my life. I've had a handful of conversations with black friends, black members of the congregation where I've asked for help to understand how I could best live with these matters, how I could honour, for example, in the church context, how I could honour and increase racial diversity and harmony in our faith community. But a handful of conversations is not enough. I've not read enough on this. I've not listened to enough sermons or other talks focused on the vital importance of racial unity and justice. And I've not considered carefully enough the the very specific obstacles that there sometimes are over history and now to bringing that about. And therefore I've not spoken publicly about this enough or with enough clarity or focus. And my life's behaviour up until this point hasn't changed much in tangible, demonstrable ways. And uh, I've grieved that about myself. I regret that. And moments like the one we're in bring these things into sharp focus. And I think one vital reaction just now is to lament and to, to grieve over, for me, at least relative inaction to this point. And I've heard some black brothers calling us to that, acknowledging that, well, it's good to see a bit of action about this now, but we've been banging this drum for, uh, for a long time. And I do grieve over my relative silence and inaction over my adult life. And as I consider all this, my inaction with regard to this sin of racism, the temptation I have felt is that I begin to feel uh, weighed down almost to the point of feeling overwhelmed. There are so many areas of my life where I feel like I fall short as a child of God, as a husband, as a father, and in my role as a pastor. I am not well informed enough and don't speak out much on lots of vitally important issues, be that environmental concerns, be that God's heart for the poor, which we should live out from, whether that's the evil of domestic violence, whether that's the sin of materialism or the horrors of abortion, whether that's the subtle idolatry in my own life or in the church in the Western world, whether that's systemic injustice that there is around the world. Never mind issues like how can I better share the love and good news of Jesus or how can I more for myself and how can I help others more behold the glory and the goodness of God day by day. So with all of this, I begin to feel overwhelmed and I I want to join the Apostle Paul in saying, who is sufficient for these things? So from that place, I felt that in these days, from that place, there are a number of dangers as I begin to ponder, what do I need to do in light of this? One danger is that I just switch off completely. And I've done that before with many of these types of matters. But significantly, the raised voices around the world have kept me from switching off on this occasion. Another danger is that the contrarian in me, the rebellious spirit in me, might want to respond Yes, but, yes, but what about all these other important issues that people aren't speaking up about? There's arrogance there, often, normally. And as I've wrestled with 
this and as I've heard the cries of those I respect and those I don't know yet, I feel convinced that in the providence of God, this is not a moment to yes, but. There is a unique cultural moment here, I think, and I thank God that he has work to do in me and in my heart in this moment. But another danger is, I don't just want to unthinkingly tick a box, so to speak. As I'm honest about the frailties that I have, the lack of capacity, I feel, um, I, I know how easy it would be for me in, in my sin to quickly construct some sort of way to respond that would enable me to put this issue up on the shelf, to effectively tick that box off. I am fearful of my inclination towards tokenism, whether that's due to selfishness or to feeling overwhelmed or to whatever it might be. How awful it would be to assume that a quick retweet of a powerful message that someone else has shared or a profile picture change would sort this issue out. So I confess, and I'm just speaking for myself here, I have felt unsure at best about the merits of a quick social media post. Now please, let me be crystal clear about this. I am in no way uh, for a second questioning or demeaning the motives of anyone who has been active to any degree on social media regarding the current racial tensions that there are and I'm aware that I am slightly contradicting myself here because as I've said already the increasing noise around the world uh, has served to keep this issue before me and so many others I'm sure and I am thankful for that but for me I've just been so concerned about the danger of tokenism that I've paused to this point and I've sought to just listen and pray and think these things through and crucially chat them over with my family and with friends. But that's not enough. Fightings and fears within, without are real. Sorrow regarding shortcomings in many other issues are very real. Tiredness and feelings of fear about balancing the various callings I have as a human being and a pastor, those are real. So I'm thankful that I can take all of that and take them just as I am to the Lamb of God, to, to Jesus. And through him, though I feel useless and weak, I come to him and I find myself in him again and again. And I find mercy and help. He welcomes me in and, and that gets me through to day and then tomorrow his mercies are new again but the final verse of that hymn is important also just as I am your love unknown that's speaking about the incomprehensible love of God that love has broken every barrier down now to be yours yes yours alone O Lamb of God I come it says I it's very individualist individualistic isn't it? I wonder if that last verse should be we come. Jesus has indeed broken down every barrier for me Martin Clark to come to God but the the dividing wall of hostility that is spoken of in Ephesians chapter 2 the, the, the dividing wall of hostility that Jesus has broken down through the cross means that in Christ we're no longer strangers or foreigners no longer separate but together unique and diverse yes we are but we are being built together into one beautiful holy dwelling for God's Holy Spirit and racism stands in complete opposition to that beautiful gospel reality and I need to do better at understanding the history of that racism in the story of the world and tragically the story of Jesus Church and I need also to understand better that this is not just a, a current US issue but is something that is experienced by many non-white people living day by day here in Scotland so what to do well there's no quick fix here but I'm going to seek I'm going to start by seeking to understand more clearly the reality of racism in the world today and there are a few ways I'm going to try and do that but I'm just going to mention two as I come to a close first of all I'm going to I'm going to read and I'm going to invite my friends to read and discuss along with me I want to give my thanks to Topher Endress who I first saw suggest this on Twitter today I'm going to find two books to begin with two 
uh, written by non-white authors, uh, one written from a Christian perspective, one not from a Christian perspective, and at least one of them specifically commenting on the context here in the UK. And basically my plan is to somehow go through a chapter of that with other people, chapter a fortnight or something, uh, and spend an hour discussing it together. At the moment that'll be by Zoom and then we can just see what, what happens. But who knows who will join us, maybe from different parts of the world and things like that. And I'm really open to recommendations on the best books for that, so please do post those in the comments. But uh, you can log your interest in that. There's a little link to a little uh, page you can jot your name and email and phone number, which just I'll keep in and pull that together. So please feel free to, to do that. And then secondly, I'm going to commit to having focused conversations with all, I hope, the non-white people who are part of our church family. I'm going to commit to getting around them and to, first of all, just catching up with them, asking how they're doing, hearing their story in general, but specifically trying to understand what this issue looks like for them day to day. What racism do they encounter in the world and in the church possibly, week by week, and asking them, what do we need to do as Jesus Church in light of this? And then I said two, but there was a third one I was going to mention. I'm going to look again at the preaching plan in the church. When I first turned up at the church here, I planned to touch on certain issues uh, periodically, once a year or, or something like that, and, and certain key topics that I wanted to hit on. And this was one of them, race, racial injustice and racism. Uh, and I failed dismally at pulling that off. But we want to hear God's word on this crucially important topic. And I need to do better at taking us to that place more regularly. Um, if you're still watching, well done. I'm finished now. It's, it's hard to know of the countless matters of life and death around the world just now. It's hard to know where to focus, right? We need the Holy Spirit to guide us and lead us into truth as Jesus promised he would. This is a sorrowful moment. But I'm thankful that in it, God is gracious and God is teaching me how much I have to learn. If you want to join me in this initial baby step of doing some reading and sharing together, uh, do please log your interest uh, below. And may God help us. May God be gracious to us. May God be merciful to us. And may God pour out his spirit in this world that justice would rise up for his glory. Amen.